All right. Hi again, everybody. Thanks for tuning back in for our virtual class today. Agenda for today is probably the last class on this, this training block or training phase on some of our takedowns. And again, we're going to keep them uh, fairly beginner friendly and things that we can take either, you know, no landing, but still understand how the landing would happen or make the landing really pretty, pretty nice and easy. So if you're following along with these, you know, really emphasize that, you know, especially if we're not in a, a room with mats or something like that, we want to be pretty safe and not have any, any bumps and bruises that are avoidable with this. And then we're also going to continue showing some basic footwork and handwork and things like that, that if you're trying to follow this along, and you don't have anybody that you're you're with right now and you're just having to do these solo you can still understand some basic footwork and hand movements and things like that to uh, try to follow along as best you can and just visualize having a, a partner or an opponent with you there okay so with that said we'll go ahead and bring it on up to the feet so i'm gonna switch sides with mira here All right. So getting into uh, our takedowns, the previous classes we've done so far have been getting into, the first class we did was just, we have a body lock or a rear waist lock and how do we do the takedown? And then the next class we did was if we're in a situation where the match has started and I wanna try to get to a body lock and how do we do that? And the scenario there was nobody had any grips yet. Okay, nobody had any grips, or maybe it was like a no-gi and it's harder to make grips or something like that. Today, we're going to look at some similar material, but off of the scenario that maybe grips are already established. And we still want to try to get in, get on the body, get some good control. We just now have one more obstacle that we've got to overcome because maybe now my opponent has some grips and I'm having to, to fight that battle there too. Okay, so if we're wearing the gi, then the typical grips that we're going to have are Mira and I are each going to take our right hand and grip near the collarbone on our, our partner. On that side. Perfect. Okay. Uh, and then our other hand is going to control somewhere on the sleeve. Okay. And these are a pretty 50-50 grip, right? And we'll just do a 180 rotation so you, everybody can see that, that it's even. It's 50-50. Okay. So we'll spin back. Okay. Now, now, we don't want to fight from a 50-50 scenario. That completely defeats the point of training martial arts. You, you want to get to the point where you have a much better chance of winning than just 50-50. That's the whole idea of what we're trying to do. So instead of trying to get my takedown from this neutral, this 50-50 position, which might happen, but it also might happen to her, what I want to try to do is quickly improve my position so that I have an upper hand over my opponent. And one of the, the best ways to do that is get to an inside position, okay? So if we both take these 50-50 grips, okay? Our right hand is on the collarbone, our left hand is on the sleeve. And by the way, if this was no gi, what Mira would be doing instead of holding my collarbone, she would have what's called a collar tie, where she, yep, tries to do that, and I try to do that for her. And it, it's a very similar position, and this series is gonna work pretty much the same regardless of if you're no gi and you're doing that or if you're gi and you're holding on to the uniform, okay? But we'll just demonstrate with the gi since we have that on today. Right. So uh, our right foot's in the front, our left foot's behind us. We each have a collarbone grip and we each have a sleeve grip. What I'm gonna do to establish my inside position is my backhand that's holding her sleeve is gonna swim underneath and it's gonna cover her triceps. So not only the front of the arm, I'm trying to reach all the way over, so I'm covering her arm here like this. What that allows me to do is when I lift my elbow, her elbow also rises, okay? And that's gonna be what I wanna do. I wanna try to make her elbow rise, okay? And in fact, I wanna make her a little off balance by rising her elbow and then pulling with this hand, my collar grip hand, like I'm making a right hand turn on a steering wheel. And she'll, she's not gonna fall over, but she's going to be a little bit off balance and it's going to let me get her elbow high enough that my head is going to duck underneath to the other side. Okay, so she's got her grips. I'm going to try to turn like this and I'm going to try to hold her arm up so that my head can come under. Okay. My head right away is looking at her far shoulder just like before and I'm going to come 
get my waist locked in. So one more time, let's turn about 45 degrees here. So I take my left hand, I swim to the inside position. I'm gonna make her elbow go to the roof and her opposite shoulder over here is gonna go down. Okay, it's gonna be difficult for her to hold that and it's gonna be an opportunity for me to come underneath. And I don't wanna get guillotine, so I'm looking somewhat up and I'm looking over at this shoulder. Should be very difficult for her to make a guillotine choke on me. From this position, I've got a clear shot around her waist and I'm gonna go ahead and get that waist lock and I can go into my tabletop takedown that we learned before or other takedowns that you might know know from there. All right, let's just do one more time. So we both have our, our grips here. All right. I'm gonna come underneath and then wrap the tricep here. Okay, we call it a bicep tie. I'm gonna make her elbow go up and her shoulder go down. Eventually she's gonna to need to let go of this because it's hard for her to hold. And I'm gonna come underneath, look up, and I'm looking right down all this embroidery on her back. That's gonna be what protects me from a guillotine choke and it keeps her off balance. And right away, I'm coming right around to her waist and I'm gonna go ahead and get that waist lock that we practiced before. And I could, of course, go into my, my tabletop takedown that we learned a couple of classes ago. Okay. So next, I'll go ahead and show this without Mira and then I'll have her step in and go ahead and do it with me. Okay. So our fighting stance, I've got one foot in front, foot in back. My front hand, sorry, my front leg is the side I'm gonna get the collar, and my other hand would have the sleeve. You're gonna practice swimming this inside and making this sort of a, a cup shape, just like this, and that's what's gonna control their tricep. We're gonna steer, so both of your hands are working together. Okay? This is my collar grip hand, and it's pulling the collar down. This is my bicep tie hand, and it's lifting their elbow up. And as it's going up, I'm gonna duck under it. And now my head is on the other side of their arm. And remember, I turn my head and I look right down their back. Mira's got that embroidery on her gi, and so I'm looking right down that embroidery. And then I swim around and I get her, her waist. I can connect my hands and I can get my, my waist lock from there. So I'll show one more time for you following along without a partner. So I've got her collar, and I initially had maybe the end of her sleeve. I'm gonna release the sleeve, come under to my bicep tie position, okay? My hands work together, like I'm making a, a right hand turn on a steering wheel, and as her elbow gets to the highest point, I duck my head low and shoot it forward underneath so that my head is now on the other side of her arm, her body. If I leave my head there and I don't turn it, I'm at risk of her getting actually a good position. So I wanna turn and look down her shoulders okay, and keeping my head up so I can't get stuck in a choke. And my left hand will right away come around and get her waist. And note that obviously I turn my foot, I do this swinging motion with my foot to make it easy for me to get that, that waist grip. Okay, because my left hand is what's getting that waist grip. So I'm just gonna kind of point my toe right at, right at her waist. If I leave this foot in the back, it'll be hard to, to do that. Okay, so let's bring Mira back on camera. We'll have her on this side. So we both have our right hands on the collar. She's in her fighting stance, right? Right foot in the front, left foot in the back. Knees are bent a little bit. Okay, center of gravity is slightly dropped. Okay, her left hand is gonna release my sleeve and come to the bicep tie here. Perfect. What she's gonna do is try to make a right hand turn on a steering wheel and twist me this way. Now she has all this space to get her head underneath and she's going to glue her ear to my back and she's going to look at my opposite shoulder. And so, uh, press your ear into me here. Yes, this way. Let's spin so that I can see the camera. This pressure she's putting on me with her head is super important because it's what keeps me off balance, okay? So she, it's really important she keeps her head on me, especially until she gets her grips connected. Now she's going to get her grips connected Okay. And now if she wanted to maybe like do that tabletop takedown, she could easily do that. Other way, that's the way, good. And now she gets me with okay. Let's show one more time. All right, so we each have a collar grip and a sleeve grip. 
She's going to get to that bicep tie on the inside. She's going to make that big steering wheel turn and come underneath and glue her ear onto my shoulder and look at my far shoulder. She connects her hands just like that. And if she's not ready for the takedown right away, one thing she can do is keep her grip and kind of like ragdoll me around the mat, maybe put her leg back on the other side. Yeah, and she can just kind of ragdoll me all over the place until I'm off balance. And then when she's ready, she can do that sort of tabletop. I think Mira liked ragdolling me around a little bit too much there, okay? <laughs> so that's a, a great way to get, uh, get into, into that. Um, one other thing I'll, I'll show on that before we move on to our other one is sometimes when you do an entry like that or maybe that particular entry, you might get the other person's arm trapped in your waistline. And that can actually be really good because it, it makes their arm uh, unusable to a degree to them and it actually takes away some of their counters so it'll be easiest if I demonstrate this on on Mira so let's take a look at this okay let's uh, spin this okay so we're gonna do the same way mirrors in her fighting stance right leg forward left leg back knees are bent you know hips are, are slightly slightly down so bend your knees a little bit yeah there you go okay so we have our grip I do the same thing, so I get my bicep tie, I make her off balance, she'll just let go for the drill. I come in like this, and as I'm coming around, one thing that can sometimes happen is her arm gets stuck. I want the camera to be able to see her arm gets stuck right there. And I'm not going to take Mira all the way down, because this one's a little harder to do a, an easy landing on. But what I would basically do here is I would block her foot. So my foot blocks her foot and I would drive her over or, or kind of fall backwards so that uh, she doesn't even have that arm to post with. And so she's super stuck at, at that point. So uh, if you have mats at home and you have a training partner that is okay taking some falls like that, feel free to practice. Uh, but that's not something that, that's probably not a fall that you're as ready to take right now with the current experience level and such a big size difference. And so we'll just leave that one up for you guys to imagine kind of how that would go. All right, so that's one more entry that we can do into that body lock. Now let's look at one more. And even though I think getting our head behind the opponent would be preferred, that's gonna be plan A. If you're going against somebody that knows what they're doing, it's they are gonna fight like crazy to never ever let you do that, okay? So we wanna be able to have a strategy and have some offense when I do the same sort of a thing, but my head stays into the front position. Okay? I think this one in particular would work really well in a no-gi environment. Again, we've got the gis, and so we'll show it that way. But I think this one in particular would be a really good no-gi one. Um, so if you're somebody that does some no-gi and you like it, then consider tossing, tossing this into your arsenal. Okay? So we'll start the same way. Right foot forward, left leg back, legs are bent, okay, so I'm in a good athletic position, okay? I'm going to start with, with that same bicep tie, and I'm going to be able to get a little bit of clearance here, but I don't think it's enough that I can get my, my head all the way through, okay? Um, and so that's a problem. And so there's another way I can try to get inside position that's not just the bicep tie. And so what I'm going to do here, and just... Keep your grip loose and let go if it hurts your arm. What I'm gonna do here is come over the top with my elbow, and then I'm gonna swim to the inside here, like this. So I'll turn right there. So you guys see my hand is making a cup-shaped grip on Mira's shoulder, like this, okay? And now, if you guys didn't hear, I said that Mira, just for safety, should probably be ready to let go of the collar grip if it hurts her shoulder because it can wrench your shoulder a little bit if you are too determined to keep that grip and your partner goes aggressively for this move, okay? So let's look at that one more time. Again, Mira's instructions are to keep just a, a medium grip here. And if it starts to irritate her shoulder, she just kind of lets go and goes, goes with it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is take my elbow higher than her arm, then down, and then my arm swims up to here. It swims up to here. And now what I want to do is make my elbow as high as I can get. 
The higher I can get my elbow, the more pressure it's going to put on her shoulder, and she's going to want to let go of her grip. Now, just like we practice really slow right there, if you're practicing at home, make sure you go really slow too, because it comes on very quick and can be surprising how much pressure this puts on, on Mira's shoulder when we do this. Okay? So now Mira and I are going to stand on the opposite side, so I need you to see her other leg here. And so now I'm going to repeat the same thing with my left hand and show you guys what the next step is going to look like. Okay? So she's still holding just kind of medium to light and she's ready to let go. So I come over, I swim through, and I'm trying to put my forehead, I'm trying to put my forehead kind of into her jaw right here. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a step toward her foot. And she should be pretty off balance right there. As she's off balance, I'm going to let go of the collar and block her leg. And then I would keep going and she's going to, she's going to fall over right there. Okay. We, we call this a knee tap takedown. Great takedown. You see it in gi, you see it in no gi, you see it in MMA. It, it really is a, a really, really good one. Um, and it's something I think if Mira and I go slow, uh, she'll take it easy fall on this one. Now, I want to make sure we do some instructions first. So she had been holding my sleeve with her left hand. What she's going to do is she's going to need to release that and do the mat slap with, with that hand. Okay. And I'm going to go nice and slow and I'm going to like kind of hold her up a little bit. So it'll be a, you know, a very, very low impact fall. But if you guys are practicing this at home, you know, just kind of start slow and remember to let go of the sleeve and use that hand to do the, the slap. Okay, so let's look at it again. Okay? This time we'll go all the way to a takedown, but we'll just do it nice and slow. So I come under, I get her shoulder, and I make my elbow the highest I can get it, and I try to get my head like under her chin. I want to have my head lower than her head. Okay, my right foot is already forward. I'm just going to make it go forward more, and I'm going to block her knee. Now, she better let go with her hand right now. Okay, and what I'm going to keep doing is my left leg is going to take a step forward and she's going to kind of start to fall. She's not going to post this arm. She's just going to make it do a slap. Okay, slap. Perfect. Very good. Oh, we went off camera. We got to back up and do one more. <laughs> okay, we're going to back up and do one more because we went a little bit off camera. So we're going to start way on this side. Okay. Oh. All right. So I come over, down, I get her shoulder, I keep my elbow high, and I get my head here. Okay? I'm going to step forward, block her knee. She's going to let go. Okay? She's going to make sure that she doesn't stick her arm down. What she's going to do is a slap. Three, two, one. Good job. And so what I would do is I would just make sure that I stay on top and I try to finish in a good chest-to-chest -chest position against Mira, and I get that. I get that pin, get that good control. Okay, so now I'll show with an invisible partner and then Mira gets some revenge after, <laughs> after that. Okay, invisible partner. I've got my grips. I'm gonna take my, my elbow and I'm gonna swim over like there's like a cinder block here and I'm trying to break my cinder block with my elbow because you're bored at home and you have nothing else to do. Okay. Well, once my arm is down, then I'm going to swim my hand and my hand is going to grip her shoulder so that I can see my own fingertips when I do it. And make sure my elbow gets real hot when I do that. Real, real high elbow. Okay. And then I make sure that the top of my head, kind of like where my hair is, that kind of goes under her chin. What I want to do is I want to lift her chin to the roof and turn her chin to the side. Okay. I'll say that one more time because it's a pretty important detail. Uh, you can still do it even if you didn't do that 100%, but man, if you get that chin in position, it adds so much more effectiveness to the move. So the top of your head is going to make your opponent's chin lift up and turn sideways. Okay, super important that we try to get that. Once I'm there, I'm going to take the foot that's already in the front and make it go farther forward as I block the knee. And once the knee is blocked, typically all I have to do is take one more step and continue to drive that way, and they're going to go ahead and fall. So we'll bring Mira on camera, and she'll try it out. This is the 
goal to land on top of the person? Yeah, one of the reasons that this is such a good technique is because you land on top of them and you have a very good chance about already being past their legs and passing their guard so that you don't have to deal with their guard once you're on the ground. It doesn't always work out that way, but that's that would be ideal if we could arrange it as such. Okay? All right, so we're in our fighting stance. Legs are bent, okay, we've got our grips. Mira's gonna let go with her left hand, do the swim move thing, other way. That way, she's gonna get my shoulder and she's gonna make her elbow as high as possible. Yes, now remember what we talked about with chin position. She's gonna get her head driving in, or she's got pokey things in her hair, that's not cool. <laughs> Something pokey. Maybe it was another needle or something. Okay, so she's gonna get her chin uh, under me. So glue her head uh, down, 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 right here. So she's gonna drive into me and up. Yes, this way. Perfect, I feel off balance already. So now what she's gonna do, the leg that's already in front is gonna step toward my toes. This hand is gonna block my knee. And then if she goes, if she keeps her head on me and drives forward even just a little bit, ugh, she squishes me and I fall down, All right? So if possible, instead of Mira coming directly on top of me, what she wants to try to do is kind of like walk her legs uh, like across mine so her feet are going to wind up on my left side, if, if possible. Okay, it's not always possible, but if possible, that's what she's going to want to do. Okay? So let's look at one more here. So we're in our, our grips. Her left hand does the cinder block break move, just like that. She gets my shoulder and she gets her head into position. Okay? And now is when she's going to take her foot and step to my toes and her hand blocks my knee. And she keeps pushing me. Yes, her chin always is driving into me. That's why it's so important. And her elbow keeps lifting up to the sky. Yeah, I feel so off balance now. Now she takes one more little step with her left leg and I'm going to fall. Perfect. Do you see how Amira went sideways across me? Yes. <laughs> so... So that's a, a knee tap takedown, and a, uh, it's one that should be in everybody's, everybody's arsenal uh, because these sort of clinch type entanglements are so common in grappling, in MMA fighting, and self defense, and anything like that. And so having a, a very high percentage takedown at your disposal off of that is uh, super good. These are, you know, a few of the important details to it. In, if we had an in-person class environment, of course, we'd go into more details, and more what-if type scenarios. And I think that this is still plenty of material if you're following along at home to get the gist of what we're going for and have some drills that you can do either by yourself or with a partner to start adding these into your arsenal. So we'll take just a second. We'll see if there's any questions on the, the chat feature. Uh, and then if there are, we'll get them answered. And otherwise, we'll have class dismissed. Mira, do you have any questions? No. Do you want to have your mouth closed when you're... Yeah, like, Mira's question is, do you want to have your mouth closed? Teeth on top of the teeth? Or? Uh, it depends. In general, that's not a bad idea. I typically wear a mouth guard if we're oh. practicing, practicing things that have a, oh, a fall component to them or whatever, or sparring. Uh, and so if you have one, that's a fairly good idea to have. But yeah, I don't like the idea of having open and in, say, this position, the top of Mira's head, blasting my chin, and then so my teeth clang together, or I bite my tongue, or something like that. So I would rather keep my jaw fairly closed. But generally speaking, in combat sports, that's a good, good thing you should be doing anyway, is you shouldn't have your jaw very open. Uh, not that we include punching or kicking in jujitsu, but the more open your jaw is, it's just, it's a longer lever. So if you got hit with a punch or a kick in your jaw, that's where more broken jaws tend to happen compared to if it's braced and tight, it's um, less, less, not impossible, obviously, but less likely to happen. So in general, it's a good idea to, to keep your mouth more shut than it is open. So. All right. Well, it looks like that's what we've got for you for today. As always, thank you to... My beautiful wife Mira for coming in. I'm sure she likes me around a little bit. And then this is going to be our last takedown class for the training block. We'll move into some new material on our next class. So thank you guys very much. We'll see you next time.